After seething for 15 years, this guy traveled all the way to Japan in search of a jar o trickster. But why? Who was he actually murderously mad at? We are well outside the polite spoiler window, but with streaming, people watch stuff at different times, so I'm going to warn you that this whole video is about a majorly fun spoiler from Teen Wolf the movie. If you haven't watched it yet, seriously, don't ruin this surprise for yourself. You don't know what you're doing! I've been searching for this for years. I know precisely what I'm doing. So, why is Shadowy Man all big mad? Mr. Stalinsky, if that's your idea of a hushed whisper, you might want to pull the headphones out every once in a while. Well, he spent many years as a public school teacher, so there's more than enough reason in that to become homicidal. But he is specifically mad at Scott McCall? Maybe? <laughs> I think you and Mr. McCall would benefit from a little distance, uh, yes? I mean, in the last few months before mean old Mr. Harris found himself bound to a tree, he'd been outed as an arson and murder accomplice and charged with multiple murders that were actually committed by this butthurt man-child and his lizard friend. You find the girl wearing that necklace. She's your arsonist. Murderer. Excuse me? Arson happens to property. This girl's a murderer. We brought Harris in this morning for questioning. And? And they're working on a warrant to arrest him for the murders. For all of them? The tire tracks put Harris at the site of three murders. That's damning evidence. Well, all these events followed immediately on Scott McCall becoming a werewolf, and he was indeed involved in both of those investigations, he did not directly mess with Harris except in school. Hey, what do you think you're doing? The hour's up. You're not leaving until every single one of these bubbles is filled in. There is only one somewhat tenuous link you can draw from Harris's tree-hugging directly to Scott. Deucalion came looking for Scott. I know he said Derek, but it was Scott he actually wanted all along. Jennifer was tracking the Alpha Pack, so it is Scott's fault, in a very tenuous way, that Jennifer came back to Beacon Hills. Well, I don't want an apology, seeing as how you ruined my life, and you served me up as a human sacrifice to some demented druid. Again, Adrian says this, and he may actually believe it, but it's not really their fault. Hey. And you already know what I want. You want retribution against him. What I think we have here is some projection, not just on the part of Adrian Harris, but also on the part of the Nogitsune. Now, Scott is its primary target after all the trouble the team caused for it back in the day. So when Harris shows up in Japan with his head all full of vague revenge fantasies, it's the Nogitsune that convinces him that Scott is the one to torture for retribution because that's who the Nogitsune really wants to play with. You know, it's easy to forget that not a lot of people watched the first two seasons of Teen Wolf when they were airing on TV. There was that whole thing before season three when everybody caught up on Netflix and then it really exploded. But during the first two seasons, those of us who were keeping up were constantly being misled by one Teen Wolf character. Adrian Harris. Mr. Stalinsky. If that's your idea of a hushed whisper, you might want to pull the headphones out every once in a while. <laughs> I think you and Mr. McCall would benefit from a little distance, yes? No. Mr. Stalinsky, try putting the highlighter down between paragraphs. It's chemistry, not a coloring book. A lot of us believe that he had to be more than just that smarmy teacher who was mean to Scott and Stiles. All right, both of you. Out of here. A 
a lot of people, including me at one point, thought he might be the alpha that everybody was looking for. Now, there was no main reason we thought that. He was just really sus and looked like he was up to something all the time. And while he had inadvertently taken part in the Hell House fire, he wasn't the bad guy. It was six years ago, and in my defense, it was before I'd gotten sober. I met her at a bar. We had a lot of drinks. She started asking me what I do. How you could start a fire and get away with arson? And a week later, the Hale House burns down. Jeff and the writers really leaned into that whole Harris as misdirection thing in season two. Since, well, but it's been an hour. My detention's an hour and a half. Since your father was so judicious in his dealings with me, I've decided to make you my personal project for the rest of the semester. You are going to benefit from all the best that strict discipline has to offer. <laughs> Who in the hell did that? They laid out a bunch of breadcrumbs to make us all believe that Adrian Harris was the Canama master. There was his car, which kept showing up. And then there was that whole teacher in an unexpected situation scene from raving. She's 21. Yeah, that sealed the deal for a lot of us. But again, it wasn't him. Always a bridesmaid and never a bride, our poor Adrian. Except in season three, when we finally found out that he was actually up to something with the dark druid. I did what you asked. We did everything. We're gonna figure this out and they're gonna find you. But then she immediately killed him. Adrian Harris was never confirmed dead, and it was one of the few times that me being pedantic and pig-headed actually paid off. We have a rule over at the official Teen Wolf Wiki that says, no body means they're not dead. Never did that rule serve us better than in the curious case of Adrian Harris. Please, don't do this. So yeah, most people and those other wiki sites looked at that and said, oh, he did. And she's not only merely dead, she's really most sincerely dead. But I am a stubborn son of a bitch when it comes to stating something categorically. That's why from the time that scene aired until 2014, we still had Adrian Harris listed in the present tense. And then I was only willing to go so far as to say he was presumed dead. And his page stayed that way right up until the movie. The fact is, without a body and seeing all the other illusory and interdimensional shenanigans on this show, you can never really say someone's dead unless you see them as a corpse. The only time we got tripped up declaring someone dead was with Kate. Now, according to this newspaper, multiple people saw and handled the body. So you had to really be paying attention to see the loophole they left in that case. Calaveras heard that Kate had been killed by an Alpha's claws. Her body was healing more and more. She got closer to the full moon. She was coming back. So they switched For Harris, the question remains, how did he survive? I think the simple answer is that Jennifer just screwed up again. It was pouring rain, and who likes to work in the rain? 
She either didn't tighten the loop enough or didn't quality check her work, or Adrian had some druid mojo of his own that we're not aware of that just faked her out. But again, we never saw a body. So Adrian Harris was never officially dead.